everyone. This is Kim Schmidt with Farm Equipment Magazine. Uh, today's Thought Leader series is with Greg Martinelli, who operates Ag Sales Professional, which is a training, um, sales training, coaching, and speaking organization that focuses on the ag industry. So thank you, Greg, for being with us today. Thank you for having me on. Excited to talk with you, Kim. All right. So um, wanted to talk with, to you a little bit about um, some advice for uh, dealerships in, in their, their sales team. Um, so my first question for you was uh, why relationship skills are, you know, more important than ever in the current environment we're working with right now. Sure. So, I mean, obviously this is a situation that nobody in the working world has ever faced and it's more um, emotional probably than anything we've ever faced. So the economic downturn in both the, the world economy and the ag economy has made it very difficult. And so whenever that happens, they're getting hit on all fronts. And so I think as a salesperson, um, you have a very limited amount of time because we're all isolated and we can't go on farm when we want to. So you have a very limited amount of time to get out there and work with a producer. And part of that needs to be understanding the emotional side of what's going in through their thought process. And, you know, as, as many of the articles out there, including some that you've ran, the mental health of farming and even in agribusiness, I haven't talked a lot about agribusiness, but in farming has been very tough. And when, Farmers have it tough, so do agribusinesses. Mm -hmm. So I think whenever you're selling into a tough market, knowing the emotional side of what's going on is key to how they're making a decisions and whether they're making good decisions. Okay. And then um, if a salesperson was going to focus on, on just one skill to improve, um, what would you suggest that be? Yeah. Um, you, you know, along the lines of the first question, I think one of the the greatest skills, of course, you want to learn all the basic selling skills of how to ask good questions and closing skills and all that. But once you get beyond that, I think one of the most important skills a person can learn, and, and I got to tell you, I do work with and sell the product, but it's, it's a disc profile. And so understanding the four different quadrants, and if somebody's not familiar, they should Google disc. You can get access to it just about anywhere. There's a lot of people out there who sell uh, disc assessments, and it's a it's understanding, though, how people react under stress. When a person gets under stress, they go to their core quadrant. And so I think that's one of the most important things a person can learn is someone who is in the control quadrant, when they're in a situation like this, is under a lot of stress because they want to make choices and do what they want to do, and they can't change the world. I mean, it's right. we're isolated in quarantine, and you got to pretty much obey that rule. And so... Um, that person reacts a lot more stressful and differently than the person who goes with the flow and, you know, and, or that needs a lot of data or that wants to be, you know, have a lot of impact with people. So I think that is the one skill. And I always like to give, um, you know, extra for the questions and for my customers and for you in, in answering this. And I thought about this. And, and the one thing I think the, the next skill that a person needs to, to learn right now, this is probably the biggest Thing that they can do for their customers, and that is, um, is is to focus on a way forward. This becomes really difficult. I mean, you talk about the animal production facilities and, and even the the uh, uh, crop production time for uh, situation right now. They're having a lot of difficulty, but they don't need you know. And I talk about you know, I have a discussion I do where it's called "They Need You Now More Than Ever Before" because they've got plenty of bad news in the market. Mm -hmm. And 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 they don't need another person to come out there. And I know why we do it. We go out, we try to connect and commiserate and make them connect them with the customers. But they really don't need another person to do that. They get plenty of that with their family and their friends and their neighbors and at the coffee shop, if they can still go to a coffee shop. Yeah. But but I think to, to come out there and at least not join in that uh, situation and and be a, a, you know, show them a path, show them some op options some way of, you, of, of bringing your expertise that you can help them move just a little bit, just at least not a negative uh, one more person piling on all the bad news because there's plenty of it and we just, we, they don't need one more person. I think along with that as well is there's a famous thing called the Stockdale principle or paradox, excuse me. 
And that was named after, you can Google that, and it's named after uh, Admiral uh, uh, Stockdale, who was a prisoner of war in Vietnam. And that is that, you know, we may come out of this in a couple of weeks. We're starting to come out right now mm -hmm. and then go right back in to uh, quarantine. And, and that can be mentally as challenging as it has been for two months. And we've all been challenged because I get up every week and I travel to sales training meetings or presentations. And, and I've been, you know, I work from home. I'm used to working from home, but I'm not work, used to staying home. And right. um, so, I mean, the thought of going back through another couple, two or three months of this would be very difficult. But the Stockdale principle basically said, you know, never, never give up on the fact that you're going to um, overcome this difficulty, but always face the brutal, uh, brutal reality of what you're dealing with. And that is, we may be dealing with this for longer than what we think. You know, we thought it was March, then we thought April, now we're in May. Are we going to go back in? And so I think for your customers, if you can prep them with, if they think, well, we're going to go right back to normal, you know, I always say, you know, so did our parents after World War II, and so did, you know, so did us after 9-11. We thought, well, the airports will calm down, we'll go back, and then they're not. And mm -hmm. so we, we may have a situation where we have to deal with this longer than, so to mentally prepare yourself for those two things, I think is extremely important. Okay. That um, actually ties in nicely to my next question. So um, with we've been in a prolonged downturn in the ag economy, now we're dealing with all this stuff related to the coronavirus. Um, how can dealers help keep their sales teams motivated? Um, and, and maybe even more than just their sales teams, kind of everyone at the dealership for that matter. Sure. Sure. I think these are really important and things that I don't see a lot of in the, in the media, the ag media and stuff like that is, is how do you, you know, what do you do with your sales team? They're sitting on the sidelines waiting to get out there. Um, some of them have had to go out as far as the agronomy teams, I mean, they had to get out and start doing their tasks. But, uh, you know, I think one of the keys that during any crisis that a leader and owner of a store can do, uh, and that is to communicate. Even if you don't have anything new to say, it's just the fact that you've come together some way, and now we do it through webinars, but that there's routine checking in of what's going on. Even no news is better than not having so that routine, because right now we have a lot of chaos. We don't know whether we're going to get back together, whether we're not going to have, where we're going to have meetings in July. Are we going to, how is everything going to work? And so just knowing and hearing from the leader at a time when things are chaotic gives them that consistency. Hey, every week we're going to check in for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is that you're going to have access to. So I think that's one of them, uh, one of those areas where you can, um, can, can provide that. The second thing I think you can do is engage the team in the new structure. One of the you know difficulties is to know what's going to be the new normal. Are we going to go back to, you know, I would say, will we ever shake hands again? And you and I came out of this, you know, our, our grandkids will be laughing at us when we were scared to shake hands, you know, 50 <laughs> years from now. And, yeah. and same with my parents, you know, went through the depression and, you know, they still talk about doing things. I'm like, that never happens. We don't have a problem with banks. You know, they, they stay, they're, they don't go under, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so I think, you know, engage them in what we think is the new and be able to adjust. And then I think the, the last thing I think that, that we can do is provide that positive reinforcement, just like we want the sales team to provide to customers that eventually there's seven and a half billion people on the planet that want to eat. They don't all eat three times a day, but they want to eat three times a day. And somebody has got to make that food. And so we can't make it all in a, in a lab. So some of it has to be grown. And, and right. I think that, that, you know, when it's all said and done, like right now we have lack of meat on the shelves, but we got a lot of cattle and pigs backing up in. So somebody's going to figure out, uh, you know, how we're going to make those two meet in the middle. And, and that's a very positive that, that out there we are, you know, and you can bring in stories, I think, you can bring in stories of the economic downturns that, that we've been through. You know, people survived through some pretty tough times, especially in ag. The 80s, I, was, I caught the very tail end of that. And then, uh, you know, of course, the 30s was another one that, I mean, people hearing stories of other people surviving difficult times, I think is one of those where they can realize that we're not the first people in the world to go through something as devastating as what we're, what we're going through. 
I've had um, a few dealers tell me how, you know, one positive, I guess, of, of all of this is they've kicked the salespeople out of the, out of the store. They, they have to be out there making calls and stuff like that. How do we ensure, you know, and they were like, we should have done this 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, how do we ensure that, you know, we keep those salespeople out making the visits and not, not stuck inside the dealership? Sure. Um, I, I think one of the things that will, you know, we may get into this in a little bit, but I think one of the things that's going to come out of this is the, and, and I deal with this a lot because I go into a work with an organization and I start asking how many salespeople do you have per whatever, you know, per number of customers or acres or, you know, bushels of grain that you buy or whatever it is that they've got in, in trying to understand capacities. And I think salespeople should look at this time that businesses are going to re renovate what they do. They're going to look at, you know, how many salespeople we got? Do we need them all? Um, are they effective? Now it's, it's, we're in a very short window here, 60 days that we've been quarantined. Right. It's not fair to look at that and say, well, we got by for 60 days without making sales calls. That's, that's a little too short notice or short uh, viewpoint. But I think as you, as you look at this and say, do we need to be making the sales calls on this particular group? So I think for, for a salesperson, I would look at this as, be very good at planning, be very good at being precise, concise, have a, have a purpose for going there. I think it's going to actually generate better selling skills of being on the farm because we can no longer just go out there and hang out for two or three hours. I mean, the right. producers are like, why are you here? You know, get your mask on and then get out. And if you're not, uh, if you don't have a purpose for being there, they're not going to want you to just kind of hang around for several hours. So I think right. in a sense, it's going to promote some of those, those better behaviors. And I think it's one of those things where owners and sales managers are going to look at the evaluation of how do we manage our sales teams and, and evaluate who we have and how many we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what's one thing um, dealers should be doing right now to ensure business success in the future? Sure. I, I think, you know, I always like to give you, more than you asked for. So I'll give you, I'll give you two, <laughs> um, two things. And I just kind of hit on one and that is salesperson productivity is to, is to relook at your, your customer base. It, it is changing and, and being flexible in how you're implementing your sales team. You now have a chance to maybe reset depends on the business and, and the industry, but the different ag industries, um, but I know from a, from a grain origination standpoint, people have said, hey, we could hardly ever get these customers and the salesperson apart. Well, now they've had to be apart. And so they've said, well, you know, what we can do now is reset that customer base. And so I think that's one thing that they can be doing from a sales team structure. And the second thing I think that a dealership definitely needs to be looking at from a customer base is the customer experience. The entire, you know, reducing hassles as much as possible, remaining flexible, we can't do everything we did before, but we should be able to try to remove the difficulties of doing business with us as much as possible. Um, speed of, of interacting in, and obviously they, they know all the stuff about getting parts and service back to their customers as fast as they can. But I think the, the areas that you start to think about is, you know, invoicing and everything else that goes along with how are, how can we make our experience um, uh, as seamless as possible and, and as good as possible. And, and then what technology, because I, I called it forced technology. I mean, some producers have, have had to use webinar. <laughs> right. Some have had to get on uh, their, had to get their grandkid in and do FaceTime with a, uh, you know, somebody just so they could see them. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, but I think some of that's going to come around and it's going to stick. They're going to say, Hey, that wasn't typically, we don't go backwards on technology. Once we learn how to, I mean, running right. a Zoom meeting is not that hard to be on a Zoom meeting. Um, so I think once we get that down, we with with some customers, you know, one of the toughest things to do with a software program when you take it out to producers was getting them to engage it and use it and and adopt it into their operation. And I think mm -hmm. now they're you know they're going to implement some of this just by by necessity. So I think yeah. that's that's an aspect as well. Okay, and then conversely, what's one thing? dealers should not be doing right now um, to make sure they stay successful? I, I think, um, I, I think one of the, the, 
things to, to not be doing. This might be something they should be doing, but it's, 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 the inf- <laughs> it's the inflexibility in situations that usually catch. And I pull on my experience. I, I, for many, many years, worked with a lot of industry, a lot of businesses that got bought out. I was with a large ag company. And we went in and we, we, they had acquired this company, a smaller company, and then they merged them in. And what, it, what typically I saw is that during, um, during boom times, they expanded and got a, a, situ, a, a structure, a business structure. Mm-hmm. And then when times got tough, they didn't adjust. And so the faster that you can respond and react to the new normal, whatever that normal happens to be, you know, bigger producers buying bigger chunks of equipment versus a lot of smaller ones buying medium size. You know, I think the, the more and the faster you can respond to those changes, the more you, you, you stayed with the industry because we know that we're going to plant, uh, you know, whatever it is, 200 million acres and we're going to feed the world. It's just who's going to do it on how much, uh, on how much land are they own? And what equipment, how big will the equipment be mm-hmm. and how many people, how many equipment dealers will it take? So I, I think the thought, that thought process of, of saying, hey, I'm going to flex with the situation. And again, that's balancing with you got to stick it out type thing, but you, you got to know, okay, it's time to make that shift. You know, in, in my business, they've, they've wanted everybody to shift all over to uh, uh, remote webinar based training and speaking. And it's tough. I mean, I, don't, I, I think you need to do a little more. But right. it's not going to go there 100. percent I think the same thing with a with a store. You're going to see a lot more remote activity, but it's not going to completely go there. So I think that's um, um, one of the one of the ways that somebody shouldn't be with things that they shouldn't be doing is remaining. You know, here's how we do our business, and that's the way we do it, and we're going yeah. to stick with it. Like not being tough. flexible. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Those were the only questions I had. Um, anything we might have missed that you wanted to? to add? No, I always, as, as a, as a trainer and, and, a, and a coach, I think it's, it's a, it difficulty generates opportunity. And, mm-hmm. and so just like volatility is opportunity in the grain markets. And, and I think this is the same way. This is a time when a salesperson can really show the impact of what their value is to a customer. You know, a lot of salespeople struggle with well, I go out there and it's iron for iron. You know, how do I differentiate? Well, right now, during difficult times, is the time that a salesperson can shine and do what it takes to to differentiate themselves between, you know, their competitor, whoever right. else that, that doesn't doesn't step up. And and that that lesson about communication goes with customers as well. Communicate with them frequently and check in on them and 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 bring them. Um, uh, at least a, na- a neutral message as well, but a- any positive message that you can, you can bring through there. So yeah, keep checking in with them, letting them know Absolutely. you're there. Finding out what's going on with them and, and what they're doing to cope. You know, I always say salespeople, you go farm to farm to farm all day long. It's, it's like a, I mean, I equ- equate it to a doctor that goes patient to patient and treats the same disease all day. They're the greatest person to ask, you know, how do I solve this disease? <laughs> Well, this is the same way with a salesperson. It's you go farm to farm all day long and figure out what works and what doesn't. Bring that bring that resource to your customer and and don't uh, don't dis- discount how important that is. Uh, obviously, you can't gossip about your what right. somebody specifically, <laughs> but you can say, hey, here's what we're having success with, and here's what's not working, and and uh, they've got a wealth of information that that they don't realize and don't take advantage of oftentimes. So that'd be my my last parting word to the to the salesperson. Take Take this opportunity to step up and, and, and bring your resources to your customers. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much for sitting down to talk with us. Um, we appreciate it and always nice to catch up. Great. Thank you, Kim.